Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, I would like to call to order our DeKalb Board of Education business meeting, Monday, January 6, 2014, 7 p.m. Present, uh, we have, is Dr. Carter here? No. Okay. Present, we have uh, Mr. David Campbell, Dr. Karen Carter, she is uh, out ill, Mr. John Coleman, Mr. Michael Irwin, Dr. Michael Irwin, Melvin Johnson, Mr. Thad Mayfield, Mr. Jim McMahon, Dr. Joyce Morley. She will be she's will be here shortly. Uh, Mr. Marshall Orson, our superintendent of schools, uh, Mr. Michael Thurman, our teacher forum council steering committee representative, uh, Ms. Inez Colwell, Mr. David High, teacher forum council steering. Committee Alternative Representative, uh, Ms. Donna Nelson, uh, Ms. Carlene Pippins, DeKalb Auxiliary Employees uh, Forum Representative, Mr. Terrell Short, DeKalb County PTA Council Representative, uh, Ms. Sabrine Mateen, Student Representative, uh, Mr. DeMarco Poole from Stone Mountain High School. Raise your hand. Uh, Mr. Poole. <laughs> Inspiration and Pledge of Allegiance presented by board member Mr. John Coleman. Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome back. Uh, I hope it was a wonderful and relaxing break and a time to re-energize and reflect. I'm so pleased to give the inspiration today because January is one of my favorite times of year. The holiday season from Thanksgiving through New Year's generally serves as a time for reflection and gratitude. We give thanks for the blessings we have, we spend time with our family and friends, and many of us look back in gratefulness for the year we've had and the faith traditions we celebrate. But January is a time for looking forward, for resolutions. People everywhere use the New Year as an opportunity for new beginnings. It's a time not for looking back, but for looking to the future in hope, a time for setting aspirations, planning, and dreaming big. I think that's particularly important to those of us so deeply invested in education, whether as students, teachers, administrators, or board members, because education is and has always been about the future. I've seen this in my own life. When I was born, my family was living in poverty in a trailer park in central Florida, but my dad used his education to create a career that gradually helped us improve our position. I've seen the remarkable power of education in my personal journey, unlocking doors, opening my mind to new experiences, and allowing me opportunities to make an impact that I likely wouldn't have had without my parents' focus on school and without the influence of so many teachers in my life. And for many of you, education will be a pathway to a better future. You students will have the opportunity uh, to use your education to become more thoughtful, happier, more fulfilled, and more prosperous. You teachers and administrators will use your life's work in education to radically transform the lives of kids with whom you work and ultimately the society that they will build with your help. I don't know what 2013 was like for you. I know as a system, DeKalb had its ups and downs, and I'm sure for hundreds of thousands of people in this community, there were alternatively blessings, tragedy, hope, and despair. But for all of us, this new year is a new beginning. It is a new opportunity to create something beautiful in this county, in your classrooms, in the lives of each and every one of the kids for whom we adults bear responsibility. And I hope that in this new year, we can all resolve to dedicate ourselves to creating an environment in which students, teachers, and all members of our community can hope, dream, achieve, and thrive. Uh, and before we move on to the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, on a note of inspiration this evening, I did want to note there is a small football game taking place in around one hour this evening. Uh, and Mr. McMahon actually alerted me to the fact that we have four DeKalb County graduates playing in those games tonight. Uh, first, on, on the wrong side of the ball, uh, for the Auburn Tigers, uh, we have... <laughs> Southwest DeKalb uh, uh, graduate Jonathan Mincy, who's the starting cornerback for Auburn. Uh, and we have Tucker High School graduate Justin Garrett, who's playing at linebacker. 
And then for Florida State, uh, the soon-to-be victorious Seminoles this evening, we have Southwest DeKalb's Terrence Smith, who's the starting strong side linebacker. And, uh, and I'm sorry if I get this name a little bit wrong, Yukimi Alikwi uh, from Stone Mountain, who's playing linebacker for Florida State. So that's something we can be proud of. Too. And with that, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I guess it must mean, John, that we, for the, the inspiration will, for, will be for us to complete our jobs here. <laughs> and get to the television on time. Um, recognitions, uh, Dr. Marley. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I know it's getting late, but we still have to have some energy here. <laughs> uh, this recognition is for the Clarkston High School uh, School's Mr. Holland's Opus Grant Award, whereas the DeKalb County School District is dedicated to, devoting, to developing students academically as well as musically and well, whereas the Mr. Holland's Opus Foundation keeps music alive in our schools and communities by donating musical instruments to underfunded music programs, giving youngsters the many benefits of music education, and whereas helping them to be better students and inspiring creativity and expression Throughout their, play, throughout their playing music, and whereas the foundation believes that kids thrive when given the chance to learn and play music instruments, and whereas the education and that all students deserve a chance to play an instrument, and putting an instrument in the hands improves the quality of the education in their <coughs> lives, and whereas the Clarkson High School Band, under the direction of Mr. Arthur Hunt, was the only, the only high school selected by the Mr. Holland's Opus Foundation in the DeKalb County School District to receive this spectacular and rewarding grant Whereas, therefore, we the DeKalb County School Board of Education do hereby acknowledge the great accomplishment of the Clarkston High School and Glorious Band having achieved one of the most significant awards in America, not just DeKalb County, in America, in official recognition whereof we hereby affix our uh, hereby fix our signatures the sixth day of January 2014. We want to say congratulations to the Clarkston High School uh, Music Department to Mr. from Mr. Holland's Opus Grant receiving that grant and to Mr. Hunt, the Director of Music, and we want to give them a round of applause. You all want to come up? Come back. We stay down there. John. Don't they look fantastic?
All right, we have a second recognition this evening for Sequoia Middle School for the Mr. Hollins Opus Grant Award. So whereas the DeKalb County School District is dedicated to developing students academically as well as musically, and whereas the Mr. Hollins Opus Foundation keeps music alive in our schools and communities by donating musical instruments to underfunded music programs and giving youngsters the many benefits of music education, and whereas helping them to be better students and inspiring creativity and expression through playing music, and whereas the foundation believes that kids thrive when given the chance to learn and play music, and whereas that all students deserve a chance to display an instrument and putting an instrument into their hands improves the quality of their education and their lives, and whereas the Sequoia Middle School Band, under the direction of Miss Colleen McHugh, was the only middle school selected by the Mr. Holland's Opus Foundation in the DeKalb County School District to receive this spectacular and rewarding grant. Therefore, we, the DeKalb County Board of Education, do hereby acknowledge the great accomplishment of the Sequoia Middle School Band, having achieved one of the most significant awards in America, in official recognition whereof this sixth day of January 2014. Congratulations again, uh, Clarkston High School and Sequoia Middle School. At this time, I call for a motion uh, to adopt the agenda uh, for this business meeting. Uh, moved by Dr. Marley, second by Mr. McMahon. Is there any discussion? Um, Dr. Mr. Orson. Uh, oh, wow, it's on instantly. I'm not used to that. Um, I was going to move to amend the agenda to postpone the consideration of policy DKA till our February meeting based on, I know that we're going to get a report from Dr. Bell. I think there are a few modifications that might be appropriate, and trying to do it before kickoff might be harder. So, okay. um, so I. Moved by uh, 
Uh, Mr. Coleman, second by Mr. Uh, McMahon. Is there any discussion? Um, here is not a call for the vote. All in favor, nobody show of hands. It is approved. The first item, <clears throat> Mr. Superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Chair, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Uh, permit me the opportunity to formally introduce uh, Mr. Poole. Uh, the, the chair has already recognized him, but Mr. DeMarco Poole is a young man I met over a year ago, and, uh, and I was just so impressed with him at uh, his uh, intelligence, and his insight, and his maturity. He is currently a 10th grade student at Stone Mountain High School with a 3.1 grade point average. He serves as student council president at his high school and helps to lead many of the community service efforts in his community. He's also an accomplished athlete. He plays four positions on the high school football team. And uh, whenever I'm around him, even tonight, uh, he's just a joy and a source of inspiration to me. He volunteers his time and helps with activities that occur after school and on weekends. And uh, he's well respected by his peers and the entire Stone Mountain High School family. He currently has five schools that he's interested in attending after high school. Now he's a 10th grader. He has five schools he's interested in attending, and these schools will help to prepare him to reach his future goal of becoming a state senator or president of the United States. <laughs> See, the first time I met him, I knew he had a little politician in him. See, I could just see it in him. Uh, DeMarco is proud to represent the Student Advisory Council at today's Board of Education meeting. So let us welcome uh, and, and really congratulate Mr. Poole for his efforts at his school and in our community. Mr. Poole, feel free to participate uh, in the discussions. Uh, and uh, ask any questions that you would like uh, in that regard. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd now like to introduce Dr. Michael Bell, who has uh, just arrived from Margarita, Margaritaville uh, down in Key West. And, uh, <laughs> he has a tan to prove it, and uh, we're delighted. As I stated earlier, he was celebrating uh, his wife, his lovely wife's retirement, and uh, we're just happy that you're back, and I hope you enjoyed your trip, Dr. Bill. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent, Mr. Chairman, board members. Um, it was pretty warm down there. I wanted to cool off, but just not this much. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's cold out there. <clears throat> um, in relation to the ongoing audit of the after-school extended daycare program, as I understand it, I was on an airplane this afternoon, but y'all received a document which is made up of an executive summary of the effort as to where it is now and uh, an executive summary and a preliminary draft as to where the auditor, Mr. Biggs, is right now. Mr. Biggs had, had some uh, family issues today, and I'm sorry he couldn't attend the 2 o'clock meeting. But if you taking a look at the document, I think there's, there's more sampling that needs to be done. Uh, he does make some uh, comments, preliminary comments, relative to the 08 audit materials that was done in 2010 and to where he sees compliance uh, in those areas, but I think he would like to do some additional sampling and site business before it's completed. So I think it's probably a good idea to put off moving forward on the policy until Mr. Biggs is finished. Thank you. Uh, any questions? or? Uh, Dr. Bell, when would you expect the uh, final phase of uh, Mr. Biggs' work to be completed? I would certainly hope by the next board meeting we should have a final audit report that can be given to the board prior to uh, the board meeting so it can be digested. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Marshall, I'm sorry. Yeah, and so that's great. I think, though, based on what I've seen preliminarily, I'm going to take some guidance from this and circulate some suggested changes. I think we, we were sort of headed in the direction because what, much of what I read had to do with oversight from the central office to the programs. And I think, you know, one of our goals in the drafted policy was to shift oversight to your division, where I think it's more appropriate since it's a financial 
transaction, and so I think we're headed in that direction. I think I, I'll try to take what I've seen in the preliminary report and to bolster that and to circulate it among the board and the staff. Thank you. Anyone else? That's it, Mr. Superintendent. Uh, Thank Mr. you. Mr. Chairman, I want to call Mr. Gary Brantley with probably the most exciting three-minute presentation you will see. Uh, I, I, yeah, it's, it's really three minutes, and I mean, it's, it's a major step forward uh, for the district. And I, you know, sometimes I use the purple, but this is, I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> Once you see this presentation, you will understand why I'm so excited about what he is doing, and more importantly, what we are prepared to do going forward for our students and parents and stakeholders and really people all over the state of Georgia. Thank you, Mr. Thurman. Uh, Dr. Johnson, members of, the, members of the board, and Mr. Thurman, good evening. <clears throat> As we continue to enhance the Cab County School District with new and efficient technologies and build upon, most importantly, the superintendent's bridge initiative between our central office, schools, and communities, we have worked and beta tested for several months to bring to you the district's first mobile application. This application gives parents of, the, of our district and community stakeholders one place to receive and obtain all district information and resources. Our application is free, customizable for your phone or tablet, and it will provide parents and the community with district access and information anytime, anywhere. Parents will now have secure access on several mobile platforms to keep up with the day-to-day -day activities of their children. The world today is all about mobility, and DeKalb County School District will use this mobile app to push information to you as we continue to close the gap on communication and information. Please take a look at your monitor for a second to see the features of our application in action. <coughs> An app to engage the entire community in ways we never thought possible. What if when we typed our district's name into the app store, it would be our app that appeared? What if we could personalize the news feed to see only the schools that matter to us? That would be awesome. What if all district and school calendars were integrated into a single calendar? And what if we could add school events to our personal calendar? Never miss a parent-teacher conference or an early out. Because all this info could be found in one easy place. What if we had an app that could modernize our schools and districts with push notifications? We would know instantly about any emergencies. And what if we could receive great alerts for our students? That's an emergency too, right? What if our app was built on a framework that is helping millions of parents across the country? Making it faster and easier for us to get up-to-date information than ever before. That would be an incredible app. Well, guess what? We've got it. We've got an app made just for our district. And it's here for you to download today. May I applaud Mr. Yes. The, the district app will be available and actually is available now. Um, you can download the app on the district website. And <laughs> on the district website, the iTunes App Store, and for Droid users, uh, the, the Google Marketplace. Simply type in DeKalb County District, the DeKalb County School District, 
parent link in the search bar. Again, information on, on how to obtain this and download it can, can, be, can take place straight from the district website. Uh, thank you very much. Very good. That concludes my report. Thank you very much. That is, that is exciting. Action items. Um, number one, um, establishment of dates and times of the CAP Board of Education meetings for 2014 presented uh, by me. Um, and, of course, um, option one. Um, board members, if you had an opportunity to discuss or review all of the options, option number one would be all monthly meetings of the Board of Education uh, will begin at 6 p.m. and will be held in the David Williamson boardroom in Robert Freeman Administration and Instructional Complex 1701. Montreal, uh, Mount Industrial Boulevard, Stone Mountain, Georgia. Yes. Wouldn't that be, if we retain the current structure, it would be 7 p.m.? It would be 7 p.m., not 6 p.m. Right. That's what I was just reading what's on here. Right. But I think it, if we retain it, would be our current structure and our business yeah. meetings are at 7. Is that, that's a typo? It should be 7. Yeah. Thank you. So option one, um, option two would be uh, the work sessions. Third, the dates of the work session. Let's take option one and do we have any discussion uh, as a result of option one? Uh, Mr. Orson, I believe you had some discussion. Well, before getting to the specific dates, I just think, you know, we implemented this structure basically when this board came together, and, uh, and I think it has worked pretty well. I know it makes for a long day, but I think we've, we're, we're developing a pattern, we're developing an approach. We recognize that some things as we go through the work session where they're designed for more intensive review, if they're not ready, for the business meeting, we postpone them as we have. Uh, and, you know, I always found as a citizen with regard to the two meetings at night per month, it was a huge demand on everybody, the public to come out here twice a month, the staff that we asked to come out and spend two of their nights a month instead of one month a night. And, and we didn't have the sort of informality that I think has lent itself to more robust and meaningful discussion that we have in the current structure. And so I would advocate for option one. I do have some date modifications I would suggest, but I, I think maybe the, yeah, okay, while I'm here, so I was going to suggest um, that for the April meeting that we have it on March 31st, uh, that's the first, my rationale is that would put four weeks between meetings, between the March 3rd and March 31st meeting, and then five weeks between March 31st and May 5th. The other would put six weeks between meetings, Plus, give us a Monday meeting immediately after what I presume will be spring break, which I think is always a tough time for everybody because the district is closed. Margaret, are you keeping up with that? Okay. So, so the first part is to change the proposed April 14th meeting to March 31st. The second would be to change the proposed December 1st meeting to December 8th. The same rationale. I think it's really hard to come from a week off. The offices are closed. Everybody's been away. They're trying to catch up. And to then have a meeting immediately. And then the third, I'm not as wedded as to whether we want to consider having our first meeting in January on January 12th instead of January 5th. Again, so we're not coming immediately after an extended vacation where the district offices are closed. Because I think what we end up having to do is we're asking the staff to come in during their time off. Everybody is sort of scattered to the four winds. And I'm just, our, our policy says, it anticipates that the meeting's on the first Monday of the month, but it doesn't require it as long as we publish the schedule in advance. So I would suggest those, if we end up going with option one, those three modifications that the April meeting be March 31st, the December meeting be December 8th, and the January 2015 meeting be January 12th.
All right, hearing none, uh, we will then go to option two. Uh, this option two really deals with the work session on one week uh, and the business meeting the following week. Um, that's the old model uh, versus our number one is our present model and um, option two is the old model. So I think the first thing we need to do, if it's okay with the board, is to decide which model uh, the board would like to um, uh, approve. And then we can make any other formal. Let's take the first option. Uh, all that's in favor of the first option, let us know by show of hands. It's unanimous. All right. Now, the, the second thing I think we need to do would be to, um, Mr. Orson made two recommendations regarding the uh, option one, and that is to move the meeting from April 14th to March 31st. The second would be to move the December meeting from March, to, I mean, December 1st to December 8th. Um, everybody that agrees with, huh? Jan January 5th to the 12th. Same rationale, same rationale for all. Um, all in favor of those changes, let us know by show of hands. I'm sorry. Discussion. Moving these dates because they are the week after holiday. Mr. Uh, Mr. McMahon. And we, just from a historical perspective, this meeting and our December meeting, we've both experienced in that time frame a week off prior to our board meetings. So we've all dealt with this in the past two months to where we had Thanksgiving break and we came back and had a meeting the next day. We had Christmas break, New Year break, came back meeting the first day. So I think it's very prudent for us to be able to work and communicate with the with our administrators and have that time to prepare adequately for the meeting. And I see the logic and move in it. So that's my two cents worth. Any further discussion? At this time, I, um, I would like to um, vote on the amended changes um, all in favor of the changes, let me know by a show of hands. Uh, that's unanimous. Okay. So that means that our board of meetings will be, I guess we need to take an official vote. Um, I was moved by Mr. Orson, second by Marley. Is there any discussion? Uh, here and nine, uh, call for the vote. Okay. Uh, it, it passes um, eight and oh. Next item official function of the board. Uh, for calendar year 2014, it is requested that the Board of Education approve, approve travel related to educational conferences, meetings, and workshops that addresses issues, strategies, and processes which will enable board decisions to improve student achievement and successful management practices within the district for the calendar year 2014. Moved by Mr. Campbell, uh, second by Dr. Irwin. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, uh, I call for the vote. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> Pastors eight and oh. The next item is a personnel recommendation, uh, Dr. Ward Smith. Good afternoon, Dr. Johnson, members of the board, and Mr. Thurman. It is requested that the Board of Education approve the hiring recommendation of an applicant to the position of Title I paraprofessional effective Wednesday, January 8, 2014. This applicant is the great nephew of a current Board of Education member. As required by Board of Education Policy, GAG, Staff Conflict of Interest, a personnel recommendation to hire a relative of a current member of the Board of Education or current superintendent must be approved by the Board as a separate agenda item in a public recorded vote in an open session. Please note that great nephew is not required per the policy. However, in the spirit of transparency and all the work that the district has done to ensure that we have fair and equal hiring practices, this item is being presented. Once again, it is requested that the Board of Education approve the hiring recommendation of an applicant to the position of Title I paraprofessional effective January 8, 2014. Moved by. Mr. Coleman, uh, second by Mr. Campbell. The, uh, Mr. Campbell, uh, is there any discussion? Here, none. Uh, a call for the vote. <laughs> Eight, uh, seven, Jim, you didn't vote. <laughs> uh, it passes um, seven and one abstention. Consent agenda. I call for a motion uh, to approve the consent agenda. Moved by Mr. Orson, second by Mr. Mayfield. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I call for the vote. Jim? I vote yes. <laughs> I vote yes. It passes uh, 8 and 0. Oh. Did I miss anything, Jim? Uh, that's the consent agenda. Uh, board comments, um, two minutes. Jim, Mr. McMahon. Thank you, Chairman Johnson. And I'd just like to thank the administration for all their hard work. Welcome back from the longest break that we get during the year. And uh, I know everybody's fired up about hitting the ground running for calendar 2014. Um, I did want to uh, acknowledge one of the top 100 influential people in Georgia, as by Georgia Trend Magazine, is our own superintendent, Michael Thurman. I I think under his leadership, it has been very evident that the spirit and beliefs in DeKalb are changing for the positive. And uh, based on Michael's leadership and collaboration with the board and the staff and administration, that we have the ship in, headed in the right direction. I just want to thank you, Michael, from personally for all your hard work. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I don't think Michael will have, will be the only one with accolades this evening. Uh, I want to thank nine board members for being the best board uh, in the state of Georgia. Uh, and I congratulate each, of, each and every one of you. And thank you and God bless. Uh, Mr. Coleman, your two minutes up. 
the uh, do we have some representatives from International Community School? I think I saw some of you in the back, or some of you here. So we went through it very quickly. It was on the consent agenda. We heard a lot of very good things about the school during the work session today. Uh, we obviously didn't discuss it tonight. Uh, obviously, we renewed the charter, uh, but you know, thank you all for coming out for the last several months. Uh, thanks for putting together a very professional presentation, for working with the staff who all had very good things to say about you. Uh, I noticed all of you sitting back there, and this is consistent. You guys have been involved in the process uh, quite consistently, so thank you, and it's, uh, it's a real pleasure to see what you're doing, and hopefully uh, you can keep doing it moving forward. Mr. Mayfield. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, I know this was obviously not a part of the agenda, but I do think that I'd like to put Dr. Howe on the spot right now, if I could, uh, to share an announcement regarding our school calendar. I know there are a lot of anxious parents, students, and uh, certainly teachers uh, who are eager to, uh, to, to get those dates uh, so that they can do their planning. Thank you, Mr. Mayfield. Um, I'd like everyone to know that the calendar committee will be meeting this week and next week, and they will be developing draft um, calendars for the 14-15 um, school year for stakeholders review prior to submitting it to Mr. Thurman for his review and con consideration, of which he will bring uh, forward at the February board meeting to the board for your approval. So. Um, it will be out this month for stakeholders to consider, and it hopefully will be approved at the February meeting. Thank you very much, Dr. Howe. Uh, uh, which was, in the course of the review, perhaps look at the idea of at least a tentative what, what year in the 15-16 calendar, but look at a two-year cycle just I mean, as a possibility. I know some just, systems just go a ahead. I won't, won't yeah, just a suggestion because you know, we're, I know a lot of it's gone on. We're, we're kind of late compared to other systems. Things happen. It is, but perhaps we could get ahead of the game for the following year in developing the criteria. We could be looking to the year ahead also. Yeah, Mr. Poole, um, would you like to m make some comments or a comment? I will get the mic, Mr. Mr. Poole. Oh, it's not working? Oh, he said it hasn't been working. He's been trying to come here. <laughs> Mr. Mayfield's there. Yeah, you can borrow Mr. Mayfield. Thank everyone for coming out. And uh, as uh, Mr. Thurman said and giving me a warm welcome, definitely making me feel a part of the team. Um, to share just a few things, I want to say that definitely DeKalb County is probably the greatest county in the state. And I've been in a couple of them, you know, since I was a kid. But um, I definitely want everyone in this room to know that there is a, a, a large amount of character that is displayed within each and every DeKalb County school. I mean, you literally have to sit in the classroom and notice that these teachers really are like the second dad or second mother to these kids. And it's amazing how they go through the struggle with these children in the county. And it, it's amazing to see them transpire into something that becomes a productive citizen in America's society. And it's, it, it's something I think about all the time. And like I say, there's nothing greater than being in this county. And I truly do love being in this county with a great board, I must say. And uh, <laughs> I know they're working very, very hard. Maybe we don't give them enough credit, but I, I think they, they're working their tails off and they do a great job. And I'm really proud of them to see them working so hard. So it really makes, makes my heart warm at the bottom to know that there's a great team working really hard. Is this you young man right? going places. So, if I may, Mr. Chancellor, Mr. Mr. Poole, is there one thing you would ask us as an administration and a board to change? If there was one thing that you suggested you might make that might help the district? Huh. Well, I'm not so sure if there's one particular thing because there's so many things that we do great and um, definitely don't want to undermine yeah, those. Words, but um, <laughs> yeah, too cool. how would you say it? I think that we're definitely in, on the right track to success 
on a mass level. So um, I think if you just keep doing what you're doing, we will get there. It's just a matter of being patient, having the community work together. And I heard a speaker say it earlier that a divided home won't, won't survive. So, you know, definitely with the help of this community and this board, I think that we have a great chance of becoming, like I said, the greatest county, not only in the state, but in the country, and making a great example for those to come and those around us. So, definitely. Are you, are you Mr. Thurman's neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Actually, he's the son I know. Him. Right, no, no. Dr. Thank Wally. You, he is phenomenal. Thank you, Mr. Wonderful job. Right, I was wondering, I was just going to ask, can we just go ahead and make a motion to have him to come back every month? <laughs> Uh, most certainly, we have appreciated you and just hearing it right from someone who's a product, who is a part of the DeKalb County School System as the wonderful things that you see going on. We most certainly appreciate you being here. Uh, it has been uh, a real auspicious occasion for me and just looking at where the board is and what we're doing, but also, you know, the administration, the superintendent, I have been quite pleased. And it's almost as if we're moving at great speed. You know, one time Martin Luther King said, you know, when a, a, a fire is raging and the fire engines are going through the streets and it runs through the red lights and that's what we have to continue to do is run through these red lights because we do have an emergency that has been taxing on us for a long time and so we have a student like Mr. Poole, we have the administration, we have a superintendent, we have a board uh, such as this. We might not agree all the time but that's okay because we didn't all come from the same place but at least we're all going in the same direction. I think it makes a real difference and I must say that I'm very pleased at what's being done, where we're going and where our students and our parents are going to be as a result of this, and if they are winners in all of this, imagine where all of the cap can be as a community. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, with that said, uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? Uh, is there any uh, move by Mr. Campbell? <laughs> Uh, Mr. Campbell, uh, second by <laughs> Mr. Coleman. Uh, is there any discussion? Hearing none, uh, I call for the vote. On the screen. Thank you all for coming out on a cold night.